Hello, my beloveds. Welcome to today's Sunday sermon on April 14th. And it's really just going to be me rambling, which it usually is, but I don't even have a format of what I'm going to follow, but I just want to, I need to get this stuff out. So this is definitely a build on of last week's sermon of becoming the safest space. And I shared with all of you that since the March equinox, I have had this fear that I've had to face. And so uh, for a good three weeks, I just became that safe space. Even if I wasn't feeling the safety, I was allowing myself to feel the fear and to reassure myself that I was safe. And then I had more um, understandings of what was going on. And I have to recommend this book. Um, it's called Your Soul's Gift, The Healing Power of the Life You Planned Before You Were Born. Very, very healing book. And it's right in line with everything I say. And, you know, in my own book, What All Spirit Babies Want Their Parents to Know, I talk about how, you know, we plan to do this. Well, they, he gets even more in depth and says why we chose to do this. So it's called Your Soul's Gift. And the author is Robert Schwartz. Look it up because it talks about um, reasons why we may have chosen miscarriage, uh, suicide. If we ex experience someone in our lives who committed suicide, it tells us the plan behind that. It tells us why we might have chosen to be adopted. Um, the, it tells us why we chose uh, financial setbacks mental illness, even if none of these categories what you chose to experience, there is such a wisdom in each chapter. I just finished the book this morning. Um, and it is so healing to understand, okay, this is why I chose this. Even if you know at an intuitive level, I've, I, there was really nothing new for me in this book, but there was a deeper anchoring of my knowing. And with that just comes relief and release. So there's a couple of you in mind, and you know who you are, those that have experienced suicide, those that have experienced adoption. Um, you know who I'm talking to. Get this book. It is tremendously healing. And the timing of this, me reading this, was fortuitous as, as I'm going through my own very deep healing uh, journey right now. And there was just one line in the book that reminded me of what I was experiencing right now since the equinox. And so, and that's the sphere. So from the time that, um, you know, we were born and sometimes we come, we come in with embedded fear too from past lifetimes. But if we're faced with a situation that is, the emotions are just way too big for us, then we bury these emotions, but they don't go anywhere. They're stored in the cells of our body. And for me, that started back in, you know, I was just on the verge of 17, the edge of 17, um, when this happened for me. And that came with an eating disorder. And I had just broken up with my first love, which was a very sweet, innocent, beautiful love. But I had just broken up with him in favor of a guy who wasn't so good to me. <clears throat> and so that eating disorder coupled with, you know, breaking up with this very innocent love for something that was not so innocent was like the end of my innocence. And it um, it was too big for me to look at. It was too big for me to look at, so I stored it in my body. And for women particularly, we tend to store these emotions in our hips and our thighs and our, you know, our lower region. And that's what I did in the form of, of cellulite. And I've talked about this with some of you. Um, you know, I've always been, you know, I've always been thin and even in my fittest, I've always had, you know, more cellulite than you would think on someone my size and my frame. And that is stored emotions that I couldn't face and I couldn't look at. And with this March equinox, um, for the forerunners there, this was a huge DNA upgrade. And so these stored emotions that I couldn't look at before were released from my cells. And I was finally in a space that was safe enough and wise enough to be able to look at these things that I wouldn't allow myself to look through. So I know for me, I had my own life review of all these times where I felt um, 
emotions that were too big for me to look at. There was a life review of that. I know many of the other forerunners have felt that too. I'm going to give another shout out to Lauren Corgo's community, thinkwithyourheart.com, because that's where many of the forerunners congregate. And um, she gives a she gives a monthly report of the energies and where we are. And when I read her report, I just finished it a couple days ago, it was right in line with my own thinking, my own intuition. So this this sermon goes right in line with her report, and you can buy it individually. You don't have to be a member, and I don't get any kickbacks. I just have to give props to her um, because she has this wonderful community. And when forerunners are saying the same things, you know we're all under something here. So anyway, I know she had a life review, and many of us had a life review. Uh, and, and in that life review is sort of like a reclaiming of ourselves. It's a reclamation, a reclamation of our innocence. And so I'm going to tell you what I do with my own life review without really getting into the details, but I would visit every person who I had an interaction or relationship for that made me feel something that I, you know, stored and repressed. And I looked at that situation I said my, in my head, I said my piece to that person, you know, well, that wasn't cool. Um, and then I forgave them. I loved my then self to pieces. You're okay. You're perfect just as you are. You chose to experience this for karmic reasons. And now it's easy. And now it's, you're safe. Now you're safe. You've always been safe. You've always been pure. You've always been innocent. So I would love her. And then I would thank the person who is in this interaction, in this relationship with me, and say, job well done. Because on the higher planes, we agreed to have this interaction. Um, and usually it's the people who, the souls who love us the most that act as the biggest assholes for us um, because they're acting in, in service to us. I talk about this in my book, but if you can really feel into that, there is tremendous healing. So if, just affirming as I always say, the innocence in all of us and the purity in all of us and that all karma is released and we are safe to feel these feelings is tremendously healing. So for me, the fear I was facing was my cells releasing the repressed fear from lifetimes. And I got to look at it and love it from a safe place. And I probably right on the tail end of those reviews and that resolution came the anchoring of safety within me. So since my last sermon, that safety that I had been affirming continuously, continuously um, finally anchored in me and I could actually feel it. I could actually feel the safety in me. And what a difference. What a difference. I want to read some um, things I highlighted from this book, Your Soul's Gift. Um, I highlighted so much of it. There's just so many gems. Everything I know, but everything I just want to stress to um, others that are on this journey. This is something I wrote, and it's so, so it's so important for us all to just understand and embrace. You did not come into this incarnation for comfort or convenience. Your primary reasons for coming into this incarnation are to love to release and balance old karma and to form new and more wholesome patterns. I talk about this all the time. And I, in my sermon that I just made available a couple week, weeks ago, the wound of the I am, I say how we didn't come here to seek happiness. We didn't come here to get a high paying job and to get the great house and we didn't come here to party on the weekends and have a you know, to entertain our friends. We didn't come here for that. And the forerunners know this and the light workers know this. And often we've lamented it because we're like, why can't we just have a normal life? Well, we didn't come here to have a normal life. That is living on a superficial level. And it may have been appropriate at one time, but that is not why we came here, here, here now. And that is why there is a growing dissatisfaction that leads to a growing awakening because we know these things are not enough. Okay, so the new car is not making me happy and this big house isn't making me happy and I have everything that life says I'm supposed to have, but I'm not really happy. And even when we get those things, we say, okay, well, I have all those things now, but I'm not really happy. There's just a growing awareness that that's not the level we're supposed to be living on. We're not here to pursue happiness. We, we are coming here to 
balance karma from past lifetimes, but then also to clear it and release it so we're not living a karmic bound life anymore. And so how do we do that? We go deep within it. Um, uh, there was, he's just got so many great quotes. Uh, here's another one. We balance karma when we take actions that offset things we did in past lives. We release karma when we correct the underlying beliefs, attitudes, or character traits that first caused us to create the karma. Without doing the latter, we are likely to repeat old patterns of behavior and thus create more of the same karma. So this is a lot of my work and a lot of the surrendering part. And it's not changing things out there. We're already in the karma, okay? Life is already delivering us the situations we need that is karmic balancing. But we don't even have to, we don't have to worry about the, the karmic balancing. We concern ourselves with the karmic release. And simply, simply by doing exactly what I said, instead of if you're having this with someone, instead of fighting back and pushing back, which just creates more of the same story without feeling like a victim to it, and they're the perpetrator. What you do, and it comes from a deep, deep level of forgiveness, which I talk about all the time, and it's not the forgiveness we think of, I forgive you for acting like an asshole. You know, that's like, that's not healing. We forgive the fact that we felt we had to experience this in the first place. We forgive the fact that um, we believe we deserve to experience this experience. The forgiveness is the forgiving of the experience. And we proclaim and affirm the purity and innocent in all people that are involved. And we will have many, many, many instances to do this. And when we can reach beyond the level of blame and judgment and go deep into that, and, and, and this is why this book is so beautiful, because it, see, it shows you the love behind the birth plan. Um, and you can see, okay, this is an act of service. You know, there's someone in my life right now who is proving to be very difficult, and I'm able to see that she's acting from a higher, evolved place in an act of service. Um, the more difficult she's been, the more I've been able to look at my own self. Um, it's kind of like a mirror, you know, so whatever I'm judging in her, it's because I'm judging and it's, it's been, it's been part of this whole thing that I've been stored in my cells too. She's helped me with this of looking at the deepest, darkest. So even on this level where she's difficult, I can, I can meet with her on the higher planes and thank her and say, oh my God, you're playing your role so great. And thank you for all this. If you can meet whoever's in your life in a difficult way in that higher space and say, I know there's such tremendous love and I know that this is part of our role and let's just release this karma now. We don't need it anymore and I love you. If you can access that love and the divinity and the service in it, it's amazingly freeing. It's amazingly freeing. Um, so, so just like we didn't come in to be happy or to get, you know, all the material goods, much of our plan in this lifetime was to be in a situation in which there was challenge and to meet that challenge with love. There's more to it from that. Um, oh, there's so, 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 so much. So what happens is a light worker comes in and looks, um, we, we look at these challenging situations and then we go inside them. And from inside, oh, here it is. Consider this. You who read these words are forerunners in bringing to a close the learning through suffering paradigm. I've been saying that since 2013. I have to say it's the end of suffering. However, we have to go deep into the suffering and allow those feelings to actually end it. Through rapid, though rapid evolution may result from suffering, it is not necessary for growth. The human race is now ready to ascend into a world in which learning comes through joy and love. And to help bring about this quantum shift, must one must immerse oneself fully within the old vibration and transform it from within. 
So look at your life right now and what the challenges are right now. And know that you're not supposed to do anything in the outside world to change it. You have to go within and love yourself. You have to love yourself through it. And so how do you do that? Um, by not running from the emotions, okay? I said in my last sermon, we're not really afraid of the life circumstances. We're really afraid of the emotions that they bring out in us. We are fearful of nothing more than our emotions, the emotions of fear, anger, grief, frustration, despair. This is what we run from, and this is what we have to embrace. And you know, I've been saying this forever. Many people have been saying this forever. And it, it's, it's a process where you get deeper and deeper into the understanding, deeper and deeper into the mastery of it. It's so funny. This week I was alerted to an article I wrote four years ago. Uh, and I don't, it was divine. It was divine that I was just, you know, it just showed up in my inbox for no reason. No reason, no ping back, no comment, no anything. It just showed up. And it was called something like reparenting myself or reparenting my inner child. And it's exactly what I have been doing for the past four years. But really, really am mastering now is allowing these emotions um, without repressing them because the emotions have wisdom. And, you know, he even says in this book, when they're allowed, they actually self-correct. I talk about this in my own book. We have these negative emotions and then we attach a secondary emotion to it. So for instance, I'm angry and then I'm angry, I'm angry. So I'm judging myself for being angry and I feel shameful and guilty for being angry. It's not the primary emotion that is harmful. It is the secondary emotion that we attach to it. Like I should be over this by now. I should be in a higher place where I don't feel anger. That is bullshit. The highest place is allowing all the emotions to move through us without attaching to them. So I was able this week to just make myself the safest space I have ever been. And once the safety was anchored in, in me, I, I, I had this vision of myself like this big, and I have these vases, these big like glass terrariums, these beautiful big glass vases. And um, I became that vase. And it's funny because Lauren in her report talks about making a container you know, and for me, it was, I was this vase and these emotions would come and I would just simply put them in this vase. I became this vase of, um, this empty vase of unconditional love and safety and whatever was happening, I would say, hello, yes, you're welcome. And I'm safe for you. I'm putting you in here because this is the thing we think this emotion is not safe for me. This emotion is not safe for me. I can't look at it. I can't look at it. I'm not safe. I'm going to bury it. Um, but when we become the safe space to handle the emotion, and I can't tell you how to get there. It's taken me years to get there, but all of a sudden there's a clicking into place. But I will tell you what I did. I started loving myself in the same way, no matter what I was feeling. I wasn't trying to grasp on to the great feelings and I wasn't trying to push away the old feelings. Whatever the day would bring, I would just love myself the same way. And so it took a long time. Um, and then the fears came up. It was safe enough for these deep crushed fears to come up and I just loved them. And then this, the safety was anchored into me. So we all have our own process. This is mine. And I was just allowed to be this, this vase of unconditional love and safety and whatever comes up, I put it in there. I put it in there. There was a, w with this life review and understanding that I'm safe no matter what, there was a removal from the emotions. Whereas I could still feel them, but I didn't attach a story to them and I didn't try and push them away. So I didn't, I didn't, I didn't say there was anything wrong with it. I didn't push it away and I didn't attach a story to it. Me meaning I didn't say, oh, okay, I feel this way because of this. I just looked at the emotion for what it is. I look, this is what I do now. And I had to do it just this morning. I look at the emotion for what it is and I say, I am a safe place for you. So, you know, the Malabedes I was talking about, 
and saying, you know, I'm this body is safe. I'm safe for this body. Um, and what a way to ground yourself in your body. But with your emotions too, this emotion is safe. I am safe for this emotion. Um, you are the safe space to have this emotion. So let me read this. Another highlight. Eminent psychologist Carl Jung said the gold is in the dark. He meant that our greatest power and deepest healing are found in the repressed unloved parts of ourselves. When brought, I'm getting chills because this is what I experienced. When brought into light of conscious awareness and accepted with love, these aspects of self become power, light, beauty, and grace. As Yeshua said of anger, as it surfaces and is openly received by you, the anger will transform into creative power. And so it is for all our hidden rejected parts that which we most loathe and cannot bear to face are the very traits that ultimately ennoble and uplift us, recreating us into beings of even greater majesty. Can you feel that? I tell you, the day before I became the safe space, I said, okay, you know what? I am just going to let this day be as crappy as it has to be. I'm going to let all the emotions that I haven't faced come to the surface and I'm just going to love them. You know what that is? That is non-resistance. Just letting it, not even just letting it, but inviting it and welcoming it. We will all have this opportunity. But the gold is in the dark. And this person in my life who... Let's just, no, I, I'm not going to say who it is. Uh, maybe I already have. Um, the one who is like lobbying, lobbying these lumps of coal to me. She's saying, here's another lump of full coal. Find the diamond in it. And so I say, yes, yes. Uh, you know, when I was getting texts from her yesterday, in the past I would resist. And, oh my God, I don't want to look at it. But I would look at the emotions that these texts would bring up to me. And I would meet it with loving truth. And meeting her and myself in these emotions from loving truth is immensely liberating. I reached another level of liberation by just facing this and facing her with loving truth. And here's the thing about loving truth, just as an aside. Loving truth has built-in boundaries. So if, if a parasitic energy is coming at you, trying to feed off you, if you meet it with loving truth, the parasitic energy cannot feed off that. It will either mirror you or retreat from you. Sometimes both. I, in my own experience yesterday, my own loving truth was mirrored back to me, and then there was a retreat of the energy. There is, there is built-in boundaries to loving truth. Whew. So anyway, look at where you are feeling most challenged in your life and look at the deepest, darkest parts of yourself and don't try and rise above it and don't try and love it away. Mine it for gems. Um, this is tremendously freeing and this is the end of suffering. When you don't resist the darkest, deepest fears, when you can go, when you can just know that something is, is coming up in you and you're like, okay, this feels really challenging and really hard and really big. And you can say, thank you. I know there is an amazing opportunity in here to mine for these gems. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. When you can meet that deep, dark fear and face it, I tell you, it's just like I say, that dream on the mountain, you face these dark things and they are your biggest gems. Oh, and there's so much more I could, um, I could quote here. Now, let me just say this. When one is in pain, and this is, this is why we shouldn't resist. When one is in pain and says, no, I will not feel this way. And frankly, that was my M.O. for a long, long time. The universe only hears no, thus blocking the 
under the flow of understanding, love, spiritual clarity, and abundance in all forms. By contrast, saying yes to pain is the energetic equivalent of saying yes to the universe. It permits all of life's blessings to flow freely, freely through us, to us. And talk about synchronicity. I read this right on the heels of my friend Carrie and I talking about the yes man with Jim Carrey and saying it's a great movie but you really have to say yes to the emotions first you have to say yes to it if there's one block in one area there's blocks in all areas and just like he says if there's resistance to one thing there is resistance to all things and so it was Carrie and I talking about yes men and saying yes to our emotions and then reading this. And then in Lauren's report, she's got her own section of saying yes. I mean, this is, this is divine synchronicity that just goes to show you, you are on a divine path right now. Um, I feel into that. I am feeling into that. The, the end of resistance is the end of suffering. And this whole time, I have been thinking, okay, and on my spiritual journey, uh, it's it's going to be pure bliss and happiness. Only good things are going to happen to me and blah, blah, blah. And bad things won't. That's not it at all. The end of suffering and the end of resist resistance comes from within. When we can say yes, when we are that open vase, that open chalice, to put it all into, yes, I will take the negativity, I will take the fear, I will take the resentment, and I will take the beauty, and I will take the magnificence, not attaching to either one of them. You don't attach to the good stuff either. You just put it in, put it in your container of safety and love, and it is, it is just part of your own beautiful face. It becomes part of you which is a sparkling gem of diamonds. The sparkling diamond mine is what we are. So when we can say yes to all of this, then the divine flow can deliver us all of what is truly ours. Well, and, you know, just a, a really tiny little example. I woke up this morning. I seem to have this Sunday resentment, uh, not resentment, restlessness. I have a Sunday restlessness. Um, and another R word, a resistance. Yeah, at Sunday, resistance and restlessness. And I don't know what it's from, but I feel it every Sunday. And uh, I said, okay, I don't like feeling this, but I'm just going to say yes. I am safe for this restlessness. I am safe for this resistance. When you become safe for the resistance, there's no resistance. But as I am saying, okay, this isn't me, but I'm going to say yes to it and put it in my vase. I, I I just have the clarity, okay, this really isn't me, you know, maybe this is from past lifetime stuff, or maybe I'm picked up, picking up on the collective unconscious, but this isn't me, but I'm a safe space for it, so here it is, and that dissolves it, when you put it into the vase, it dissolves, it dissolves, we are the safe space, we are the end of suffering, okay, um, let's see if there's any other gems, Uh, just his little gem of emotions have their own dynamics. If you let them free, they will bring peace and liberation. They have a natural tendency to balance themselves. So just let you let you, let you, let yourself feel it. Oh, and this is beautiful too. And allowing yourself to feel the repressed emotions you were saying to your inner child. I love you so much. You are so worthy of being loved that I allow you to fully express yourself. For then you can come to a point of, again, feeling the joy and love that you truly are. The joy of living, the creativity, the love and innocence of this inner child can be set free. Can be set free. And that is what I'm feeling right now. Um, and it's, uh, it's an amazing feeling. Uh, you know, there's no resistance to the day. Instead of wondering, is this day going to be safe for me? I say, I am safe for this day. And whatever gems are lobbed my way, I say yes to them because I am a safe place to feel it. And if I feel restlessness, well, I'm just going to allow myself to feel it. And it'll, it self corrects, it self balances. It's the repression, it's the secondary emotion that is the toxicity. Oh, and I mean, this is just all the same stuff, but it's just all so beautiful. Embracing the dark emotion makes one whole and radiant, says Yeshua. Within this embrace lay the remembrance of our holiness. 
Um, and we have to master the safety first. And this is why safety has been up. We have to master this first before we can really become creative masters in this new energy. We have, And he says this in, in the book that you cannot be a master of creativity if you're deciding what you will and won't allow into the creative flow. You have to just allow it all. You say yes to all of it. Uh, another great book, and I mentioned this last year, is The Surrender Experiment by Michael Singer, I believe is his name. And he just goes to show you what he creates by saying yes to all of it. Is it all good? No. But he has amazing good in his life and peace by just accepting all of it. This is the end of suffering. So I've been using my mala beads and saying, I am the safe place. I am the end of suffering. When we say yes to it all, and when we can see the jewels in the darkness, those of you that are in grief, that are in mourning, know this. You came in here to release the karma that's in it, not just for you, but for all of humankind. You go deep within this experience and you love yourself through it. You say you've done nothing wrong. This is exactly what you chose. You've done, you're doing exactly the right thing and you are a hero for your soul and yourself and all of humanity. And I honor you, I honor you, I honor you for taking on this experience. And it's that self-love that is the unconditional love of God. And we can, when we can love ourselves inside that deep, dark emotion, the floodgates of everything that is beautiful and heavenly are free to come in. And maybe not right away, but it doesn't matter because you're in such a beautiful, safe space that that is peace unto itself. That is peace unto itself. So that is where we are right now. That's where I am right now. Many of us are right now. And, and just not resisting the deep, deepest, darkest. And it, it will come up. You don't have to go searching for it. It will come up and just say yes to it. Say yes to the pain for as long as you need to feel the pain. And it will balance. And it will make you holier and wiser and brighter and lighter. And that is the end of suffering by saying yes to all of it. So thank you for being with me today. Look, my camera didn't freeze. Woohoo! I said, if my camera freezes, I'm not publishing it. <laughs> so this is the end of suffering. Feel into it. Don't be afraid of life. Just say yes to it all, knowing that we're safe. We're safe. We're safe. We're safe. Thank you for all that want to donate to this, um, to this missive. I truly appreciate your love and support. And I will see you next time.